Greener Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Thomas Kriash, the technical director of LIFE, the green hydrogen producer that will be inaugurating the site for the world's first offshore renewable hydrogen production platform. Thomas, can you tell us when, where, how, and why will you be generating green hydrogen on the ocean? Yes, of course. So indeed, life is a hydrogen producer. So our main goal is to have and to be able to have hydrogen, green hydrogen, available everywhere in Europe as soon as possible in order to find a solution against the climate changes. We have already production sites in operation onshore. So already today, we are able to produce hydrogen, green hydrogen, and uh, to propose hydrogen to our defense of the but tomorrow, we will need more energy to produce our hydrogen. We will need renewable energy sources to produce our hydrogen. And tomorrow, offshore wind farm will allow this transition, this capacity to produce large quantity of hydrogen. But today, it's important, firstly, to prove that it's feasible. And so it's why the 22nd of uh, September, we will inaugurate the first offshore production platform, which allows to produce more than 400 kilogram hydrogen per day of um, hydrogen offshore. Where? So where it will be in the west coast of France, so in a test area called Semrel, where you already have a floating wind turbine and a floating barge. We will integrate all the production, H2 production process directly on this barge. This barge will be directly connected to the floating wind turbine already in place, and we will produce in the coming days all this hydrogen offshore. Is there a very big wind potential where you are? Yeah, there is a very large potential of wind where we are, so in France, but also everywhere in Europe. Even Europe now announced a huge roadmap for the development of uh, the wind farm with more than 1,000 gigawatt by 2040. And for that, and to uh, allow this deployment, you will also need to connect this wind farm to hydrogen. And so what we will prove today is that it's feasible to have a production site offshore directly connected to wind farm in order to uh, allow this development in France, of course, because we're in France, but also everywhere in Europe, in the North Sea and in the Baltic Sea. And what is the advantage or the advantages of being on the ocean? You're surrounded by all this water. What is the advantage of that? In fact, the goal of life is to produce renewable hydrogen. So it's to produce hydrogen with renewable energy sources, meaning that tomorrow you will need a large quantity of uh, renewable energy sources. Offshore compared to onshore, you have wind farms which are quite more powerful. The size of the offshore wind farm are between 20 and 50 times the size of onshore wind farm. You have an availability of uh, the energy in offshore, which is two or three times more available than onshore. And you have uh, price production, which are quite interesting to produce hydrogen. So all these three aspects give us the opportunity to go offshore. And how are you going to get this green hydrogen from where you produce it, from the seawater and you've got oxygen there? How are you going to get it to the people of France or to your market? So we will offload all this hydrogen, mainly by pipe. So putting the pipe between the production site offshore and onshore. After onshore, uh, we will deploy uh, our um, develop our the different obstacles uh, and we will connect this production site directly to different industry and mobility usage and have you got people that would readily buy what you're producing there do you have any off takers do you have any people who are saying yes i'd like to get some of that green hydrogen or have you still got to wait for them to place their orders no in fact um, so life in a is a uh, hydrogen producer, a green hydrogen producer, and we already have production sites in operation. So, for example, the one in France, and 
we have production sites in development everywhere in Europe. So meaning that we are already talking with all the different off takers on mobility side and on industry side. Industry side, meaning steel industry, ammonia industry, glass industry, and so on. And all this supply chain between the production sites and the different off takers we are currently working on in order to secure all this supply chain. And we already today sell and deliver hydrogen to all these different off takers. Offshore will allow us to have more massive production sites, but all the off takers are already secured through our onshore production sites currently under deployment. Will the hydrogen be moved as a gas or will it be a derivative of hydrogen? Will it be ammonia or something else? So indeed, um, ammonia is, um, is a way uh, to use this hydrogen because uh, we will have also to degrade the ammonia production. Um, so I think we will have uh, both situation. So using uh, hydrogen by gas, so not, notably connected uh, to the hydrogen backbone, which is uh, in development everywhere in Europe. Um, so through different pipe onshore, which will interconnect all the different industry and all the different consumer. And uh, for other industry application, like industry, you will have to use this hydrogen in order to produce other energy sector like uh, ammonia. So the answer will be both usage for gas, notably through the backbone, and uh, different way of production, notably through ammonia. And you know, this must have a big global potential. You now are setting a, a new path. You're the first out at sea, but people have got sea around them in many parts of the world. They will then perhaps realize what is the global potential? It's almost everybody in the world could follow what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so uh, offshore, concerning the, the potential of energy production offshore, uh, the capacity to produce offshore is more than 18 times the energy demand onshore today. So you have a huge capacity for the energy production. On life side, what we expect is to have 3 gigawatts more uh, of offshore production uh, sites by 2030. What should listeners take away from this, do you think? What is the biggest thing that they should absorb from this interview in your view? I think is that um, we can act today for the climate changes. We need to do it. And what we want to show through this production site, through this demonstrator, is that it's feasible today offshore in order to go through massive production. And we need this massive production in order to be able to, um, you know, to have an impact on uh, the climate changes and uh, to act for the energy transition. We need to stop now all our CO2 emission. And for that, it's not the only solution, but for that, you will need hydrogen. You will need uh, hydrogen to decarbonate industry, to decarbonate the mobility. But for that, you need massive production sites. We will do it onshore, and we already have shown that it's feasible onshore. We have a first production site, which is already in operation, which sells hydrogen to uh, mobility usage and to industry usage. And we show now that it's also feasible offshore, for huge, massive industrial scale. So what we want to show through this experimentation is that it's a reality of today. We have not to uh, dream of something which will come tomorrow or in a further years. It's feasible today. We, we prove that it's technically feasible and we have all the partnership in order to manufacture today this kind of platform. So I think what we, you have to take away is that um, Act for the climate change is not a dream, it's not for tomorrow, it's something that we can do today and then we can do today through green energy pollution onshore but also offshore. That was Creo Media's Mining Weekly speaking to Thomas Kriash, the technical director at LIFE, a green hydrogen producer based in France.